Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the interview dialogues of the Trumpet of Truth. I'm your host, Zhong Xing. Today, we are honored to be able to invite Professor Massimo Intervenia again, who is a renowned expert on new religious movements, to discuss and analyze the Chinese Communist Party's repression and persecution of Christians. Professor Intervenia, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Professor Intervenian, the governments of many democratic countries in the world respect religious beliefs. They impose no restrictions on religions. But the CCP has always been persecuting Catholic and Protestant house churches, among which the Church of Almighty God suffers particularly serious persecution. The CCP has not only carried out national repression against the Church of Almighty God after discrediting and framing the Church, but also found excuses to incite people's hatred toward it. For instance, the CCP passed judgment on Christians who gave up their families and jobs to preach the gospel and witness for God and smear that they abandoned and destroyed the families. Professor Intravenia, you are also a person of faith. What do you think about CCP's judgments on Christians? Sometimes there are members who decide to serve as full-time uh, uh, missionaries uh, and leave their family, but that's very common in Christianity. It's Jesus Christ himself and some words about it. You should leave your father and your mother. And uh, there are uh, uh, tens of thousands, indeed hundreds of thousands of Catholic priests and nuns and uh, leave their families to join uh, uh, the priesthood or religious orders. And uh, even in the Protestant world, uh, there is, I would say, even an increasing number of full-time uh, missionaries. Sometimes uh, true in the Protestant world, the families go to a mission, but it's also the case that people go alone, so they leave their family to be missionaries. Uh, that also happens, by the way, we can say that it's typical of Christianity in general, but I would say it's typical of religion. And uh, uh, we find similar uh, developments in Judaism, in uh, Buddhism. So, it's typical of all religions to have uh, ordained or non-ordained communities of people who decide uh, to, to serve as missionaries full time. So it's not typical of the Church of Almighty God, it's typical of Christianity, but it's also typical of religion in general. Professor Intervenian, what you say is in line with the facts. I remember that the Lord Jesus once said this, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The Church of Almighty God Christians leave their home and loved ones in order to preach the kingdom gospel to those who long for God's appearance. Meanwhile, they have been at the risk of being arrested and persecuted by the CCP at any time. They did the same thing as those who martyred for their mission of spreading Jesus Christ's gospel. Both their missions are deemed to be cooperating with God's work of saving mankind on earth in accordance with the teachings of the Lord Jesus. Scandalously, the CCP speaks of the Christians forsaking their family or job to preach the kingdom gospel as an active thing that ruins the family. Even defining gospel preaching as a criminal act, the CCP also has made a fuss about the fact that some Church of Almighty God Christians have undergone divorce and has claimed that the Church of Almighty God separates families in order to incite people's hatred toward the Church of Almighty God. Professor Intervenia, what do you think about this matter? The CCP is an atheistic party that never believes the existence of God or reads the Bible. 
What exactly does it want to achieve by doing this? Well, as I say, the, the position of uh, CCP singling out the Church of Almighty God is a, is a little bit strange. Uh, one reason is that leaving the families to preach, uh, if you feel this calling, this is, uh, as I said before, it's common in all religions. And if you become a Catholic priest, you leave your family, you don't marry. If you become a Catholic nun, you leave your family, you don't marry. But that's also happening in Protestantism and other religions. But perhaps it's even more interesting to remember that in the early days of CCP and even in the Cultural Revolution, uh, there were many um, Chinese who were actually encouraged by the wars of Chairman Mao to leave their families to become uh, 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 propaganda agents of the CCP full time. So not only in religions, but even in the CCP uh, history, uh, we find people uh, who left their family uh, to devote to an ideology all, all their life. So it's very common on human history. I know also that uh, uh, CCP propaganda insists on the fact that uh, uh, sometimes people divorce when only one spouse joins uh, or leaves the Church of Almighty God. But in practice, if you take seriously your religion, it's very difficult to be together if only one of the spouses uh, uh, strongly believes in one religion and the other doesn't. That's a fact of life. So I would say it's very much possible that if somebody joins the, the Church of Almighty God and the spouse doesn't want to join, they divorce. Uh, but that's true for the Church of Almighty God, uh, uh, for the Jehovah's Witnesses, for the Shouters, but it's also true for the Catholic Church of Islam. If uh, I become a Muslim and my wife doesn't want to become a Muslim, most probably there will be a divorce. But if we are a Muslim couple and uh, one uh, spouse converts to Christianity and uh, the other spouse doesn't want to convert to Christianity, 99% of the cases there would be a divorce. So I, I would say that, uh, well, divorce is a fact of life. I don't know statistics in China and in Korea, but uh, in the West, the majority of marriages end up in divorce. But uh, apart from this, uh, uh, when only one spouse has a strong uh, religious experience and conversion and the other doesn't, the, Divorce is very frequent in all religions. So what I see, which I believe uh, uh, it's a certain bad faith in CCP propaganda, that sometime, or very often even, they take features which are typical of all Christians, of all religions, and they use them as weapons against the Church of Almighty God. But uh, these are not features of the Church of Almighty God having full-time missionaries. Sometimes people divorce because only one spouse converts. These are features of uh, Christianity in general and even of religion in general. You're right, Professor Intervenian. The CCP not only uses these features of religion in general to attack and discredit the Church of Almighty God in China with all possible propaganda tools, saying that believing in God destroys people's families, but also uses overseas media to manipulate public opinion favorable to them. After Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang visited the UK in June 2014, a report was published by the BBC in which it discredits the Church of Almighty God by fabricating rumors that the Church is anti-family. It's really questionable why the BBC disseminated such rumors and what was really going on between the BBC and the CCP. Professor Intervenia, what would you like to say about the BBC's accusation that the Church of Almighty God is anti-family? Yeah, I'm... Uh... 
just finished uh, a study of uh, the uh, family in the Church of Almighty God. There are two reasons for this study. The first is the accusations in, uh, by CCP and also by some Christian uh, leaders uh, that Almighty God teaches that family is something bad. Uh, and uh, so it's, uh, unfortunately, this information has also been spread by some Western journalists, uh, but they only relied on um, sources of people who are against the Church of Almighty God. They didn't do a lot of homework. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is to understand uh, how um, Church of Almighty God was able to grow so rapidly. And uh, normally sociological theory teaches that family plays uh, a, an important role, not an exclusive role, of course, but an important role when movements grow very rapidly. If movements are against the family, it's very difficult for them to grow, particularly in the initial uh, stage. Now, so there are really two parts of my study. Uh, the first part is to go through uh, the word appears in the flesh and other uh, statements of faith of the Church of Almighty God to determine uh, uh, what are the Almighty God's teachings on the family. And uh, because here there is a misunderstanding, uh, because uh, um, some people will say since uh, uh, the uh, word appears in the, the flesh uh, is the Holy Scripture for our time and it supersedes the Bible, that means that everything which is in the Bible uh, uh, is not respected by the Church of Almighty God, including the Ten Commandments. That's not the case uh, because of course, the Church of Almighty God teaches that uh, in the Bible there are words of God, but also words of men, so not everything is perfect in the Bible. But there are several uh, statements uh, uh, by Almighty God uh, uh, that uh, uh, the commandments maintain a certain validity, and uh, in particular that uh, respect uh, for families and respect uh, for uh, parents uh, remains very important uh, also uh, in the age of kingdom. And also Almighty God teaches that marriage uh, should be uh, respected and that marital infidelity uh, is something very bad. So uh, I would say that we uh, find uh, in uh, uh, the words of Almighty God, uh, mm, the idea that uh, the family is something uh, preordained by God. So the family is not something bad, it's actually something good. And even in the age of kingdom, uh, we should, uh, God keeps uh, reminding us that we should uh, uh, respect the family, honor the parents, uh, uh, maintain the fidelity to our partner. So um, what is said that the theology of the Church of Almighty God is against the family doesn't find any support in the words uh, of, of Almighty God. Uh, second part of my study is about the growth because even uh, when I went to China, the, the CCP uh, authorities are very astonished of the growth of the Church of Almighty God. That's the reason of their fear, I believe. That's the deep reason of their fear. They do not understand how a church can grow so rapidly. Now, of course, I normally scholars distinguish between uh, what we call ethic and emic, ethic without a H, E T A C. And that's the perspective of the insiders and the perspective of the scholars looking from outside. So from the point of view of the members of the Church of Almighty God, uh, the reason why the Church of Almighty God grows is because it is the Church of God and God helps it to grow. And I believe that should not be dismissed even by scholars lightly. Uh, because we know that uh, in the end people join a church because they find the message persuasive. 
So uh, we should not dismiss the idea that the main reason why people joined the Church of Almighty God is because they read the word appears in the flesh and they find it highly persuasive. Uh, one of my um, uh, masters was the, perhaps the most famous sociologist of religion alive, uh, he's 82 now, Rodney Stark, uh, teaches in Texas at Baylor University. And Rodney Stark always says, we should always believe that people convert to a religion because they find that this religion is true. So that's the main motivation. But unfortunately, it's a motivation difficult to measure. And uh, scholars uh, can only measure the human side of religion, but that's not to deny that the divine side is the most important. But uh, then you, we should do our work as scholars and outsiders, and also try to assess the human side. Now, when it comes to assess the human side, uh, I studied the questionnaires uh, submitted to 500 members of Church of Almighty God. And I found that there is a significant difference uh, between uh, uh, the members uh, who return to Almighty God in China and those both Chinese and non-Chinese uh, who return to the Almighty God in other countries. Uh, in China, it seems from the questionnaires that uh, uh, a very significant number of people, indeed the majority, first heard about uh, uh, Almighty God from a relative uh, and also that uh, members of the family were important in their return to the Almighty God. Now, uh, it's not the only way of returning to the Almighty God. Sometimes entire Christian congregations convert and it's, only po it's also possible because of course I could not uh, 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 give questionnaires to members of Church of Almighty God in China, it will be too dangerous. Mm -hmm. So questionnaires were only administered to members of Church of Almighty God outside of China. So it's possible that uh, uh, those who were converted in the family are overrepresented uh, in the diaspora abroad. So all sociological studies are subject to some caution. Uh, but what comes out, uh, without making uh, uh, absolute uh, generalizations, uh, is that family networks are an important part uh, of the growth of the Church of Almighty God in China. As opposite abroad, the situation is different because your communities are small and uh, many of your members left their families to come uh, uh, abroad. So many of those who convert abroad know you through the internet or through your literature uh, rather than uh, uh, through family members. So abroad the situation is different than in China, but in China family networks are very important and that I believe is another evidence that the Church of Almighty God is not against the family. Uh, of course, there are different situations. Sometimes the family are separated because of the persecution of the CCP, but that's the fault of the CCP, not uh, of the Church of Almighty God. Yes, I totally agree with you, Professor Intervenian, regarding the consequences of the CCP government's brutal persecution of religious freedom we have conducted some surveys and assessments. In mainland China, at least 300,000 to 400,000 Church of Almighty God Christians have been arrested or imprisoned. There are at least 500,000 to 600,000 Christians who have come into exile and were rendered homeless with their families scattered. Countless Christian families have been thus broken. It can be seen that the CCP government is the main culprit behind the breakdown of Christian families. However, it actually turns the table around and says that these families are broken because people have abandoned their families for their belief in God. This is really distorting the facts, inverting black and white. What people in overseas countries hear about the facts 
of the CCP's persecution of Christians is only the tip of the iceberg. They heard about these, but most of them do not understand. Why does the CCP so insanely persecute house church Christians? Professor Javinian, what do you think of it? Well, I believe there is a general reason, which is very obvious, that uh, CCP doesn't like religion. They can accommodate to religion because uh, uh, I believe it was the first Deng Xiaoping who recognized that religion would still exist for centuries, contrary to what Marx and Lenin said. So they, in a way they can try to accommodate and control uh, but uh, it's clear that in their ideology they do not like uh, religion in general. So uh, this is uh, very simple and uh, pretty much obvious, but it's a basic presupposition. Uh, we should understand that the CCP is an atheistic uh, communist party, so they do not uh, like uh, religion in general. Uh, second, uh, all the history of CCP proves uh, uh, that they mm, persecute independent religions. They call these religions non-cynicized. Uh, now, the word cynicization is an old word, actually was created, I believe, by Chiang Kai-shek before the CCP. But uh, cynicization uh, is uh, a word to which uh, now the CCP gives a different meaning. Because in the ideas of nationalist Chinese, uh, cynicization means that all organizations in China should have Chinese leaders, not foreign leaders. Now, in this case, the Church of Almighty God uh, will fare very well because uh, not only it has Chinese leaders, but it's a religion born in China. It's not been imported by the West. So it should be the perfect example of a cynicized religion. Unfortunately, for CCP, the word cynicized uh, has a different meaning. It doesn't mean that your leaders should be Chinese, uh, but it means that your leaders should be appointed by the CCP and uh, should share the ideology of the CCP. So the three self church is cynicized, not because the leaders are Chinese, but because the leaders are appointed by CCP and the leaders are willing to work completely with CCP. So that's the real meaning of cynicide. And in this case, of course, uh, uh, the Church of Almighty God, like many house churches, uh, uh, like the underground Catholic Church uh, uh, is uh, not cynicized because its leaders are not appointed by CCP and do not work hand in hand with CCP. So that's mm, uh, uh, already a reason for persecution. But then there is a third reason that uh, became very clear when we went to China that uh, the CCP is very much afraid of group growing rapidly because they start thinking if they grow and grow, uh, they can even become bigger than the Communist Party or they can uh, convert members of the Communist Party. And uh, that's also the reason uh, they target particularly the Church of Almighty God because uh, uh, they were very impressed by the growth. They cannot explain uh, uh, the growth and they are afraid of this growth. Professor Intravenian, you are absolutely right. I very much agree with your point of view. The CCP is an atheist revolutionary party. It is hostile to theism as a whole. Therefore, it is not surprising that the CCP brutally persecutes religious beliefs. This is determined by its evil essence. The CCP has designated Protestantism and uh, Catholicism as Xie Zhao, and the Bible as a cult book. Countless copies of it have been confiscated and burned. Bibles sent to China from various countries and regions, including Taiwan and Hong Kong, were dumped into the sea.
many missionaries sent to China from various countries overseas were arrested and repatriated. Many Christian leaders and elders were sentenced to prison, such as Watchman Nee, Wang Mingdao, and others. Today, after Xi Jinping took office, he has resumed the policy of dismantling crosses and demolishing churches. It is reported that some particularly good churches were blown up. However, these reports are only the tip of the iceberg. The CCP has committed countless heinous crimes. It is more evil than the Hitler fascist regime. Yet, countries around the world know too little about the CCP's persecution of religious beliefs. They even believe the CCP's nonsense that distorts the facts and deludes people. This is really a sad thing, Professor Intervenia. What do you think about this? Well, I believe some years ago, many years ago, actually, there was an American scholar called Robert Conquest, and he did some calculations and determined the CCP in China had killed more people than Hitler. So it's uh, uh, an interesting old book uh, that perhaps should be rediscovered. And uh, after this, I believe in France, was published a book called The Black Book of Communism some years ago, and they also did the calculation in different countries. Uh, and uh, these scholars came out with the same uh, answer that the uh, Chinese communist regime actually killed more people than Hitler. That's not to, to, to say anything positive about Hitler, of course, he was a criminal. Even killing one person, uh, innocent, is one person too many. So, of course, killing millions like uh, Hitler is a horrible crime. But uh, sometimes scholars like to, to make statistics and uh, comes out that CCP regime actually killed more people. And there is a difference, of course, that uh, everybody in the world, except a few crazy neo-Nazis, neo would regard Hitler as a criminal. But few people are aware of the crimes committed in uh, China. So th the level of awareness is completely different. If you mention to a, a schoolboy Hitler, immediately realize we are talking about a criminal. But, uh, I recently was in uh, Kyrgyzstan for a conference and I heard about uh, the image, the public opinion in Central Asia as the various government. Uh, comes out the worst is United States, uh, uh, the best is Russia, uh, and China is in the middle. So meaning uh, that uh, populations in many countries, they do not have a bad impression of the Chinese government. Uh, and they do not know what's really going on in China, particularly in, in matters of religious freedom and persecution of Christians. That can be said also for Russia, but that's of course another matter. But people don't know what's really going on there. So uh, I, I agree with your comment that uh, uh, the, the problem is the awareness of the religious persecution in China in the world is very low. And uh, in part uh, uh, it's uh, low uh, because of CCP propaganda, but in part it's low because of political and economic reasons. Uh, many countries, many media conglomerates, uh, uh, newspapers, uh, uh, governments, businesses, they do business with China and so they don't want to compromise their business with uh, China by telling the truth about the, the religious situation uh, and the human rights situation in China. And uh, also some countries, that can be true in South Korea for instance, uh, uh, they need the help of China to solve problems with North Korea or other international problems, so they don't want to antagonize uh, uh, China by talking too much on uh, human rights and uh, religious freedom. So 
believe that there is important work to do in raising continuously the issue of human rights and religious liberty in China, and in particular the issue of the persecution of the Church of Almighty God, uh, because uh, all these people need to, to, to know, and perhaps some know but they are afraid to speak, uh, but some genuinely don't know. So there is a lot of work to do to tell the truth uh, uh, about uh, the, the religious persecution in China. Thank you, Professor Intervenient. Thank you for joining our interview dialogues of the Trumpet of Truth and sharing with us your opinions. Thank you. Thank you for watching. See you again next time.